And now joining Steve on stage for a conversation about data-driven cures is the CEO and founder of NanoVision, Steve Papermaster. Please give him a warm welcome. Get out your Twitter. Uh, this is going to be tweetable. Steve, so I met this guy a few weeks ago, and I um, actually had seen him in action uh, in Davos, Switzerland uh, in January, but had known his reputation of being a science advisor to President Bush. And this was a, still a time when science advisors were looked at as, you know, hallowed, you know, good people, right? So, uh, you know, I've been worried myself, many people have seen my writing, I'm worried about, you know, the state of science, what we're doing with science, respect for science, and these systems we're in. And Steve Papermaster, just to, to put on the record, is not only the CEO of Nanovision and founder, a real entrepreneur on a number of fronts, but uh, was also one of the people who was really one of the fathers of, of the uh, uh, Human Genome Project. So, Steve, I want to uh, have you take us down the path. You said this morning at a forum we had that we have to cure curing and that a lot of our assumptions that built in in how we're looking at the future of healthcare are pretty rotten to the core. Am I misstating that? Uh, no, Steve. Thanks a lot. <clears throat> we do have to cure curing. And to cure it, I think we, ha we have to call out uh, the truth in a room, which is that it, healthcare is broken. Um, even the way that we develop and deliver cures is broken. It's nobody's fault. It's just broken relative to where we should expect it to be at this stage in 2019. And I, I think that's, that's, the, that's the core, which is that health care and health of all things in our life health is the most important thing in our life and we have made despite tremendous advancements we've made the least progress in fundamentally changing um, how we relate to our health on a day-to-day -day basis so what is the pathway to fixing that uh, you're based in austin you're you're no longer of the dc world and community um, what are you doing with nano to change the game we're building a platform to cure curing. And the uh, platform is based on um, all the components that it takes to understand everybody's individual health on an individual basis, so personal health, and then connecting personal health up in total to aggregate health, which it, it, you can think of as sort of the, the internet of cures and the internet of curing. And the reason that's important is that um, solving and uh, creating breakthroughs on anything in our lives takes connectivity and it takes information. And if you look at every major platform breakthrough um, in every facet of our life that has completely changed how we work, live, and play in the last 10 to 20 years, you'll find that you had the connectivity and you had the information to change the game. So if you look at Facebook and creating the social profile, and other things like that, you went from doing something that was virtually inconceivable to very rapidly becoming something that was virtually indispensable. Um, you look at transportation and you, you say, we went from telling people never get in a car with a stranger ever mm. to tell them make sure you get in a car with a stranger, pay them, and that's how you're going to get around. You went from the inconceivable to the indispensable and you can play that out through Netflix and other similar things to go from um, taking physical copies of entertainment content to live streaming based on your preferences practically creating your own show and entertainment in health this has not happened nothing even close to it again not necessarily anyone's fault so but it doesn't work so paint a little picture so so if I'm getting it right it's sort of Nanovision and, the, and, the, and what you're trying to create is a platform that's a bit Facebook, a bit 23andMe, and a bit Uber. Is that right? That's right. Um, okay. So um, at least I'm on the right track. So what is that? I mean, I, I think one of the things we've been struggling with today and, and that I find um, so important to this is figuring out how you empower people and patients where they are, uh, enhance their literacy, enhance them as stakeholders, enhance their power. So just paint us a picture as best you can and tell the audience what this is going to look like. What it would look like is you'll have, uh, you'll have billions of people on a platform or a few platforms that are driven through marketplace adoption that people will largely self-adopt, that they will create 
and curate and maintain their own health profile. It's theirs. It's personal, it's private, and it's portable. But it's yours. Um, you can then attach it to, share it with, connect with um, anyone else that you want based on your own preferences and opting in. Though so it's in your hands and it's in your control. The power of connection is tremendous, but it should be your choice. Secondly, is it should touch every single determinant factor of your health in your life, from societal determinant factors to environmental determinant factors to direct health uh, and chronic condition and clinical, but everything. And you can't ignore, uh, you can't play economist and assume away all these other things. Uh, your environment alone impacts 20 to 40 percent of your health, and yet there's literally no way to test and manage that even in largely drug development, let alone m measuring in your life. What are you breathing? What are you exposed to? Um, who's sitting 10 rows up from you in a flight that's sending uh, uh, a virus your way and you're completely oblivious other than worried about it? All these things change when you have so, a platform. So worried about that myself. What's your name? I want to go, yeah, I just, I'm going to use you as a pawn in my game here. Zazan, Zani? Jeanne. So Jeanne, I want to ask... Um, if Jeanne was to be a nano member, and because and, I've got a lot more information you guys do, the NanoSense chip. So how is Jeanne going to interact with the nano? What does a NanoSense chip do for Jeanne? Uh, th that's, that's more a direction, Steve, of a technology that will basically sequence and attach to the information that impacts our individual and collective health uh, to be able to tell us what we need to know, what are we breathing, what's in our environment, what's in our individual microbiome, our collective microbiomes, and our collective environment. So this is technology that we have developed. So is she attached to that um, somehow? Everybody will have the opportunity to both personally and collectively uh, obtain that information right? just by virtue of deciding whether they're going to use some of this technology or not. Think of it as ways for germs. Right. Think of it as ways for... Uh, pollutants. Ways uh, like the driving ways. Like the driving ways. So there's a lot of things. Are, are, uh, is there a traffic stop set up? Um, is there a traffic jam somewhere? Is there a severe thunderstorm or tornado? You want to know about everything mm -hmm. as it pertains to yourself and as it pertains to anybody else, right? This is part of our everyday lives now and everything else, again, but our health. Why? Because we haven't developed and brought that level of innovation on a broad-based adoption platform in a marketplace. And that's what it takes. It takes platform to drive paradigm shift. In healthcare, that means a paradigm shift. It means changing everything of the way we think of care and curing, everything. And it has to match or exceed the level that we are used to dealing with in every other facet of our life, or we will have failed in the opportunity. And that is tragic. So, and we need, that will translate into changing everything about clinical trials, drug development, drug discovery, um, pricing. Uh, we don't have to talk about whether we have a, uh, an arbitration to determine or, or, or transparent pricing of free internet access. You just get on and use it. Um, a, most aspects of cures and care we should have available to us whether it's free or at fairly low cost and very rapid development and delivery. So instead of 10 to 20 years to develop a drug with a 90 to 99 percent failure rate that will serve less, fewer than a million people and cost over half a million dollars, we should have things flowing on a fairly constant basis with a 90 plus percent success rate that can be self-adopted or adopted with medical care as appropriate and costs fairly little individually and collectively the economics are fabulous. Mark Cuban, many of you know Mark Cuban from Shark Tank, and uh, Arun Kant, um, who is an investor, he was an investor in Alibaba and SpaceX and, and Tesla, and uh, you know a lot of other players out there have both, as I, I know, they put about $200 million of investment into your company. What are they salivating over? Well, in, from two things. Yeah. One is we have partners and investors, such as Mark and Arun Kant, as you mentioned, who are, number one, socially aware and conscious, um, who doesn't want to change the world? You talk about impacting investing today. What greater impact can you have than dramatically changing the ability to cure and care? Right. Uh, so savvy investors and savvy partners are very devoted to that for every good reason. Number two, good old economics. Name me one market bigger 
faster growing with more global implications than the market for health. Mm -hmm. There is none. And so from a standpoint of creating an opportunity to an ecosystem to have a winning platform or winning platforms in the right. marketplace, there's none better. And just finally, before I go to the audience, um, we've had hospital folks up here, pharmaceutical firms, uh, patient advocates, just, you know, just every, you know, insurance plans. What do you need from them for what you're doing? What do you need as far as the ecosystem to shift to make way for what you're going to do? Um, or are you going to compete with all of them? Well, on, uh, on one hand, we need nothing. Um, other than probably awareness, um, mm -hmm. and that's not a negative. It's just that um, uh, that the, the path to driving strong adoption of a winning platform in the marketplace is paved through the path of least resistance and uh, least levels of permission. Uh -huh. So this is not permission-based. We're going to do this. We certainly encourage others to do this because this is something that has to be done successfully in a marketplace in the world. And I, I think this is one of those moments where People are generally, whether they say it or not, they're fed up. They, th this distrust of science and distrust of medicine um, and distrust of medical and health isn't because I think the collective we views the, is all bad people. It's just there's clearly that sense of this is just not working. It's not because it isn't. And when everyone can, again, look at themselves and say, in every other facet of my life, everything has changed mm -hmm. except my health or our health. Or curing. So that's why we have this societal issue that is global, not just in the U.S. Now, what do we need? We just need people to think this is a great idea um, and be part of it or cooperate in whatever may wakes, way makes sense and at a minimum take this vision of the future and pull it forward. Expect of yourself and anybody that you're with and any institution you're part of and say, if this doesn't happen in 10 years, we have totally made a mistake. Don't let it be acceptable. In 10 years, everything should have changed. In 20 years, um, everything should have gone from the inconceivable to the indispensable in this phase of your life. It well, let me make a deal with you. You give Jeannet a test membership <laughs> in Nano and let her do it for a year, and then we're going to put you on stage in a year and tell me how, how, how is, that a, is that a deal? That's a deal. Okay, there we go. I just made that up. I, we'll see if he delivers. You are um, now in charge of business development. <laughs> <laughs> let me, let me uh, uh, open it up for any floors, uh, questions or comments for Steve. There's got to be one in there. Yes, right here. And tell us your name again. I, I heard it earlier, but again. Stacy Bridges with Hi, Veterans Stacey. Vision. Yes. Hi, I always have a question. Um, what are you going to do to build the trust back up? You, you're right. We're always trying to rush to cure the cure, but right. the cure is worse than the actual disease or the ailment, especially with all the side effects associated with the drugs, um, just to mention on TV. So what can you do to make the average American trust their doctor that mm. they will do the right thing for them? Great question. Great question. I think trust... Um, in, in, in what I'm proposing, what we're building starts with yourself. You'll trust yourself. You'll trust yourself that you're thinking of your own best interests and those who you love and care for. Um, and so if you feel in control of that and then you're deciding who you're connecting up with, who are those physicians in what uh, case, you have enough control over your own destiny, if you will. It may not be perfect uh, in terms of what the ability to change your outcomes are, but if you have control of that destiny and you feel like it's rapidly increasing in your favor in the collective uh, advancement here, it will change the game in dealing with physicians, with insurance providers, with employers, with government programs because it's on your terms. And I think as that happens, um, that trust will grow. Number two is, um, I think this is a general, we have rightfully tremendous concerns about security about privacy, about integrity in our lives and all the data of our lives. And yet, we can't privacy ourselves to death. We have to understand that in order to change this paradigm, this paradigm shift, we're going to have to push the envelope where the level of information, even about the air we breathe, who we're surrounding ourselves with, what's happening in our environment, our microbiomes, inside our mouth, what's happening with diet and societal impact, 
is just information that's going to become vastly more transparent. And transparency is painful at times, but it's good. And it leads to trust. So great question. Trust is paramount. It's earned. And it has to be backed up by the behavior of both platforms and behavior in using the platforms. Just, just to finish, can I ask you one last question, Steve? And you know, outside of Nano, perhaps, or maybe the platform will be good for it. We have some folks here that I really respect who work on rare diseases. You know, who work on a, you know, the tough stuff that that you know isn't one size fits all. There aren't uh, economies of scale that are easy, and the cost can be high. Research can be high. Is there something in the, you know, elixir, if you will, of genetics research and coming up with you know, larger uh, uh, human um, trials, if you will, that, that cross countries that can change the cost equation across the board, not just for the things that hit, you know, broad populations, but, you know, I'm thinking of our folks in the rare disease. Can, can, can these things be hit in a more systematic way over time? Yes, they can. At? They can, Steve. If, if I was running for office in the, this election season, I might call it, I might propose a Gene New Deal. And a Gene New Deal would, would, would be focused on the benefits of including um, and sharing on an opt-in basis the kind of broad information you can get from not only the genomics but the impact on the DNA, the gene expression of everything else that we're exposed to. And by bringing online into a platform people who are, can then opt in and share or have their profiles link up based on genetic conditions, even if you didn't even know it, mm -hmm. and say, uh, hey, you can uh, opt into this group that contains only 4,700 members, but you're the only 4,700 members in, in the U.S. or perhaps in the world that have the following traits. You now have um, a majority uh, of those who could benefit, and that information is so valuable. So you begin to tailor personalized medicine on an individual collective basis on a real-time basis where real life in real time from your DNA to your gene expression to all the things that impact your health are all known and once you do that you can cost effectively develop and deliver as close to a cure and proper care as you can get and this is letting a thousand flowers bloom it's really letting over time eight plus billion flowers bloom because that's the population of the earth and in fact it's more than that because um, life goes down to code which is common at a certain scientific level. We, do, we don't want to be afraid of that. So you want to solve for food, you want to solve for water, you want to solve for most environmental issues, solve this because when you solve the equation for basic cellular and genomic life in a positive way, um, it will enable the solution um, uh, to most of the major problems that we deal with today. Ladies and gentlemen, Steve Papermaster, Paper Chairman and CEO of NanoVision, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.